Discover ancient Egyptian religion and philosophy through books, through music, through health, and lectures by Dr. Seba Ja Ashby. Puja, greetings, peace, and blessings. Thank you for joining us in this webinar tonight, which will give an overview of the Serpent Power Weekend Workshop. So before we begin, I would like to go ahead and commence with a chant, a chant of Om four times, as we will discover, as will be presented during the weekend workshop, Om is an ancient Kemetic, ancient Egyptian, name of the divine self also. So as we do the chant, we will feel the energy starting, the vibration from the chant starting at the base of the spine and working its way up in the area of the spinal column all the way to the crown of the head. So sit in with your spine straight. Take a deep inhale through the nostrils, the abdomen pushes out. Exhale, pulling the abdomen to the spine. Exhaling through the nostrils, inhale. Exhale. Now we're gonna inhale and start their chant of Om. Om. Peace. So I'm Siva Ja, and I will be the main presenter for this workshop. And I will be joined and assisted by our Serpent Power team, some of whom you may already know Asar Onk, Shemza Ku, Shemzola Peju, and Ua. Asar Setna Nebira. So Arat Sekum. So Arat Sekum is an ancient and the oldest spiritual path to enlightenment from Kemet. And it is similar to the Kundalini Yoga system that later developed in India. So in this two-day intensive weekend workshop, workshop, we have a lot to cover. It will be intensive. And what we're seeking to experience is this ancient African Egyptian serpent power spiritual system through an integrative approach. This integrative approach, we're going to cover many different aspects of what all together encompasses 
the serpent power system. It's going to include a study of the ancient serpent power scriptures, original scriptures from Kemet. It's going to include cleansing the energy centers, the chakras through the practice of Ma'at. Ma'at is the precepts of ethical conduct, of righteousness, of order, of truth and life. And also it's going to include the ancient Egyptian or Kemetic yoga posture system and Sekhmet breathwork and also devotional worship and meditation. So it will be intensive, but it will also be integrative. So uh, to not feel that it's going to be so much we're going to be doing in the short time because hopefully um, I'm working to make it integrative as well. And the key word for understanding the process or the, uh, the whole overall process is SA. Uh, this is the, the focus I want for this workshop. SA means understanding, but not just regular understanding at an intellectual level, but it's understanding with the depth of feeling. And the way we're going to bring that feeling aspect into what we're going to do is that we're going to incorporate worship uh, and ritual along with the breath work and along with the postures. And these will bring an, a feeling and a, a, an emotional component to it um, that will allow us to get an understanding of the wisdom aspect and then to be able to take all of this and go into the meditation aspect. So throughout the presentation, I may use the terms Kemet or, Kem, or you may also see written in the presentation Kemet and KMT, all of these forms. And of course, we're talking about ancient Egypt and in today it's called Egypt and it is in Africa of course in the Northeast Africa. So what is the Arat Sekhem serpent power rising? So this depiction, this image is from a tomb in Thebes or Luxor and it's from ancient Kemet and it depicts an Sar, an aspirant, a spiritual aspirant, an initiate, visualizing himself, herself, riding the serpent into the cosmos. So the serpent power system is like a vehicle through which consciousness rides up to heavenly levels. And this rising of the art second culminates in the experience of co what we call cosmic consciousness. And we're going to get into these meanings during the workshop. The attainment of spiritual enlightenment, also called Nahas, uh, that's the comedic word for it, and also known as Sema in the comedic word. So how is this relevant to us in the here and now? Well, what are we all looking for in life? If you take everyone who's trying to whatever the actions are doing whatever their activity they're involved in whatever they're seeking it comes down to everyone is seeking to either find some happiness some peace some love and this path this this nahas this cosmic consciousness offers that but not just in an ephemeral or transient glimpses that we get in time and space reality when we're trying to find peace, love, and happiness, the roller coaster ride of it. It offers it in an abiding way. And really, one may say, well, you know, I don't know about this abiding mass because um, I don't think it's possible, but it is possible. And that's been um, shown to us by all the ancient sages, the Kemetic sages and sages of other spiritual mystical traditions as well. And not only is it possible, but really it's the destiny of everyone. Everyone is in a path to attain this abide in happiness, peace, and love. So everyone is on this path, but there are effective ways to do it, and there are non-effective ways to do it. There's whereas you're doing where you're just spinning your wheels, and then there's a way to do it which will lead you to that endpoint. And so the mystical tradition offers a process to lead you to that endpoint in an effective manner, a way that works. So Arit Sekum. So Arit is the comedic term. It means serpent goddess. And in this context, we were relating it to goddess Uajit. And she has many other forms. There are many other forms of the goddesses that are related to her. We're going to go a little bit of that into a little bit of that at the workshop. 
So Arad in this context relates to the ancient Egyptian serpent goddess Wajet, which is also spelled Wajit or Wajet. And essentially we're gonna to refer to her for this night's program as the goddess of enlightenment. And Sekhem means power or the life force energy. Sekhem relates to the leaning goddess Sekhmet. So she's in the uh, form of a lioness. And she is the goddess of the prin cosmic principle of the life force energy. It's that energy that sustains everything that sustains us. Um, let me end this because I, sorry, there's a slide that's not showing up for some reason. Okay, so Arad Sekum is an expression of the transcendental divine self. And we're going to go into that in the workshop also. So we all have like that sa understanding of what we mean when we say the transcendental divine self. So in the form of goddess Wajit, she represents the dynamic creative principle of that the divine self and she manifests as creation and therefore she manifests as the duality of creation also. So she is a representation of creation and that creation is duality. And she utilizes this life force energy of the second in a very special way that polarizes it and brings about that duality. And we'll discuss in the workshop really the appearance of that duality. The duality is really an appearance. that works again. So the Arad Sekhem leads to a dual process, but also the serpent power in the Arad Sekhem discipline is about depolarizing. So she polarizes into duality and the discipline that we will practice is a depolarization process of this same dynamic nature of the goddess Wajit. And it will harness and utilize the same life force energy to bring the individual consciousness back to oneness, back to that universal consciousness, bring duality back to oneness. So the earliest known evidence for the Ard Sekum is the Horomachet or Horomachet, the Sphinx as it's called. And this provides geological evidence of the ancient origins of the Ard Sekum as far back as 10,000 to 12,000 BC or even earlier. These grooves that are here on the walls have been analyzed, the, the sediment rather have, have been analyzed and it has been dated, carbon dated to 10,000 BC or earlier. And the Hiramakit has also a serpent component to it, which we don't see when we go to Egypt these days. If we go to Egypt where we see images of the, the Hiramakit or the Sphinx, we don't see a serpent component to it. But until somewhere around 700 to 1800 ACE, the Hiramakit had a serpent on the forehead in the area called the third eye or the eye of intuition, which is known in the Kundalini yoga system as the Agna Chakra. So you can see it in this image here. So there used to be a serpent on the Horamakit in this area. And this is the serpent, actually the head of the serpent that last time we were in Kemet was actually found on the, um, in the Cairo Museum it was. Previously it was in the British Museum, but now it's in the Cairo Museum. So the Horamakit, it displays both the Arat, the, the serpent, iconography with the serpent at the third eye area and then it also um, displays the lioness or the leaning second iconography because of it's the headdress which is like the mane of a lion you can see it in this image over here and then also the body of the lion so we have the serpent and the lion iconographies So the Horamakit, the Sphinx, is the oldest then documented representation of the serpent power system in this known human history. 
And the Horamakat is also called, uh, it's also a symbol of Simatawi, which we translate as yoga or Egyptian yoga, symbolizing union of the higher self, right? You have the, the head of a human, the face of a human with the serpent at the third eye, which symbolizes intuitional awareness or enlightenment. And then you have that is powered by the animal nature, the lower self, which is the animal body. So when those two comes together, you have union of the higher and the lower, which means yoga or union or simatawi. And this leaning leonine iconography, it's very pervasive in the comedic um, Chateau Nantra teachings. Uh, and for example, you'll see images of priests and priestesses of Kemet that they wore apparel with these leaning motifs on them as an expression of that lean and power. They think of us, uh, a lion. Think of uh, how their muscles ripple when they walk, That all of that, that animal power. That, uh, so it symbolizes that, that power of the spirit, the divine self, the essence to destroy animal forces. Mm. Pooja, if everyone can uh, mute their uh, their mics, uh, uh, there's uh, some feedback that is coming through. Dua, thank you. And I'm not sure what the red lines in the screen are, but okay. So the serpent power serpent in Kemet, and there's also serpent power serpent in India with the Kundalini Yoga, they both have these three and a half coils. You can see the image on the left which is the Kundalini serpent goddess with three and a half coils rising out of the lotus. And you can see the image on the right with the serpent goddess, which is known as the basket of Isis, goddess of Set, um, with three and a half coils also. So there are similar mystical systems for spiritual evolution. And this is not surprising because historically at one time, India was a colony of Kemet. So in our study, for that weekend, that intensive weekend, we're going to include the serpent study of the serpent of the basket of a sect of Isis. And we're going to talk about the significance of the cauldron it sits upon. It sits upon a fire. That fire relates to the energy of that serpent goddess. And we're going to discuss also the meaning of the three and a half coils and how that leads us to get back from duality to oneness. So also a similarity between the Kemetic and the Indian systems is the what's called the Sefik Bara of Kemet, which is all, which is called the chakra system of the Indian Eastern system or, or the energy center. So on the left, you have an image of the Indian Eastern chakra system. And in the middle, you have an original ancient Egyptian Kemetic papyrus, which shows the energy centers as these seven chains or rounds. And we're going to go into the imagery uh, or to the meaning of all of these uh, in the workshop as well, too. And this is another expression of the Sefik Bara, the energy centers um, from Kemet. So Kemet has its own specific iconography related to these energy centers, and that informs also the practice of the serpent power system from the Kemetic perspective. So here, uh, this is a Kenna papyrus, and you see them as spears. And this is a very important image where you see this monster biting between the three and the four. We're going to talk about that as well during the program. So these images, I said, they specifically inform the practice of the Arad Sek Sekum, the serpent power, from the comedic perspective. And we're also going to use translations of original ancient comedic scriptures as well related to the Arad Sekum. And that too will inform our practice tonight. study. There are many different, um, a lot of iconography. Uh, these are just a few um, that relate to the Arat Sekum, and it's prevalent in all of the historical periods in Kemet. As I said, this is one of the oldest systems of spiritual uh, practice. And so we will look at some of these and they will also inform our study and practice. So a big feature of the serpent power discipline is purity, 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 purity. Did I say purity? <laughs> purity, 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 purity. It cannot be said too much. In some of the Eastern 
uh, traditions that practice it, and I'm not speaking about all of them, but some of the t my experience relative to some of the times is that there is a lot of emphasis on um, raising the serpent power energy, raising the serpent power energy. Uh, there needs to be a lot more emphasis on purity, purity, pur purifying, uh, purifying the physical body through diet and through exercise, such as the, the posture system, mental purity ethical purity and emotional purity. In other words, if you have complexes and family members you're having issues with or going through fights with this person or you can't forgive that person, then this is what you need to work on to approach the Aratekum. You have to be a very well-adjusted personality, even relative to, to our Western culture, which is a whole other <laughs> level of um, discussion, but just at least a normalized, well-adjusted person. And if you have these issues, then they become part of your serpent power practice at a very um, foundational level, and they cannot be overlooked. We're also going to discuss briefly the Book of Jehuti, uh, which is the great the god named Thought, the, uh, his name, the Greek name is Thought or Hermes, he's known as. And this cautions about the serpent power practice. Because if, if there's insufficient purification, it causes blocks of the subtle energy centers or the flow of the art sector, and that flow becomes short-circuited. And that leads to mental imbalances. It leads to physical imbalances, mental illness, physical illness. And probably a lot of people that are in mental hospitals or being treated for mental illness are experiences imbalances of their art second short-circuited system. And there have been people also who have practice this stuff but have not purified themselves enough who have had uh, experiences that have resulted in mental illness so really uh, the purity aspect must be established especially for the meditation process to be effective and not lead to ill health so we are going to spend quite a bit of time on these foundational aspects of the Arab Shechem practice as well. Okay, um, I don't know if everyone is muted. If someone, if you can be sure you're muted. From ASR. Everyone who's on can check and be sure they're muted. Do I? So we're going to work to purify the Sephic Bara, or the energy centers or the chakras. And when this Aaron Serpent Wajid, when she uncoils and she moves through the psycho spiritual energy centers when they are sufficiently purified and we're going to talk about what that means that sufficiently purified they lead to an increase in the uh, levels of expansion of consciousness that one experiences increasing levels of peace increasing levels of joy increasing levels of well-being of contentment of fullness of happiness So we're also going to study and practice the mysteries of attaining what's called heart center enlightenment. So this is a part of the Arat Sekum as well, too. And it's expressed in this powerful ancient Arat Sekum serpent power iconography. So I'm not going to go into that tonight, but that's going to be one of the features as well, too. And we are going to be using, as I said, a very integrative approach to awaken and raise our Arat Sekum. So in addition, to, in addition to the Shedi or the spiritual discipline of uh, Arat Sekum, we're going to incorporate all of these other aspects of the Shedi disciplines, which work on all different aspects of our personality and our overall being, so that we're all in this process of harmonizing and accumulating the life force energy in order to raise it through the art second approach. So we're going to do wisdom, mat, devotion, which is uashu, and rek, and ua, which is meditation. So we're going to do, as I said, breath work. We're going to focus on a meditation technique of the breath of the goddess. 
that's going to accumulate the life force energy and concentrate it and it's going to cleanse the sapphic bara the energy centers as well we're moving blocks freeing up more energy and we're going to correlate postures to the energy centers and work with the uh, when we work with the energy centers we're going to go through various postures and this is going to again present like a cleansing healing and balancing of the physical body and also of the mind also of the energy and of the soul and then we're going to study listen and discuss and reflect and meditate the mind so this this uh aspect of studying the teachings listening to the teachings reflecting in the teachings which discussion can be a part of that and then meditating on the teachings we're going to use that also as part of our SAR, a part of our understanding uh the wisdom that's going to be brought out and this is going to purify the mind and the intellect and it's going to lead to those moments of aha or at least i hope you're going to have a lot of aha moments moments of unfolding insight about your true essence about how to relate to world world how to interact with others in the world so that you don't develop these uh complexes and uh, feelings that are uh block your energy block in your flow of the art second block in your happiness your abiding happiness and a big focus is going to be on mod for ethical conduct for enlightenment again uh this focus in mind and how to act with righteousness, how to act in a right way, what is the right way to act, uh, will free up a lot of energy as well too. Because then we won't be acting with unrighteousness, which will create a, a go against our higher nature and create blocked energy. So we're gonna release blocked energy th through study, reflect reflection, and practice of the precepts of mod. So while we were there that weekend, we're actually going to be mod. We're gonna create, a, an environmental, a subtle energy atmosphere that will per be permeated with mod. We're, in other words, we're going to be on our best behavior and our best spiritual conduct, and we're going to be looking, um, evaluating the thoughts in our minds as to are they pure, are they impure, because we don't want those impure thoughts to go and become blocks for us from uh, interactions that we're having actually during the workshop. So we're going to try to work and resolve those things and work on mod to create this very pure environment and atmosphere for us and our relationships and interactions with each other as well which will create ethical impressions in the unconscious and we'll have a big focus on mod um mod has i think the more the most slides in here uh, to purify especially the first three sephic bara energy centers as you can see from the canopy papyrus that is an important focus right the first three that monster he's fighting between the third and the fourth sephic bara energy center chakra and then i said there's going to be devotional practice uashu where we're going to release block energy as you discover the deepest essence to be love uh that that divine essence that transcendental essence um, can be described in different ways peace joy love abiding peace abide in joy abide in love so we're going to use the devotional worship aspect to cultivate this or to remove the block so that it can be experienced and learning to love universally these are the things that have to be done if one wants to have effective serpent power meditation and to use the system to attain cosmic consciousness one cannot have complexes of hating people or don't liking people or can't stand people and and then be one with the all it, it doesn't work that way so these things have to be resolved and understood in a way in a proper way that they can be resolved and then we'll have devotional worship uh there are some uh, specific scriptures that will be translated um related to goddess segment and goddess wajit and so we'll have readings from those in a devotional aspect to open our hearts to the divine love and again all of this with the purpose of releasing that block energy and then what are we going to do with all of this energy we've released all of this block energy we're going to harness it and we're going to utilize it as well as taking in more energy through the practices that we're doing with the breath and the concentration and then we're going to harness and utilize it through what's called what we're referring to as a serpentine thought form vector process 
So if you think of the form, if I say snake, or if I say think of a cobra, then you might think of a physical cobra. But I'm not talking to the physical form of that snake. I'm talking to the shape, the way it's shaped, the way it looks, and the way it moves, the way it undulates. The frequency, the vibration of it. So the serpentine form refers to like the principle and vibration of frequency of that serpentine energy. And the imagery re refers to how you're going to visualize it, how you're going to see it in your mind's eye. That thought process and, and then the serpentine vector is the will aspect and guide in that through the imagery and with that shape of it, that energetic quality and the vibration of frequency using the will power to then guide that through upward through the Seth through the the chakra system through the Sephic Bara through the energy centers through the art Sekum, where the two serpentine goddesses the dual goddesses then rise up and become one and dissolve in duality into oneness And in the myth of the goddess Aset and the god Ra, this is expressed as creating a taffy shepsi, a serpent. So all of these things will be working to create this taffy shepsi, this serpent that then can be ridden, like a, this vehicle is depicted in this imagery, to the higher energy centers becoming established at higher and higher energy centers until it goes all the way to the crown of the head where that non-duality, that oneness is restored. And that is the attainment of complete uh, conscious, cosmic consciousness. So that's in essence what I've just said. The integrative approach removes the energy blocks bringing up the art second energy plus accumulates our more art second to be put to use how to raise the art second serpent power energy to increase in levels of stem establishment and expansion in consciousness. So I know this is the Atlanta program, but I just want to share with you in case you do know anyone in the Florida, South Florida area that we also are having another program um, after the Atlanta program for because some people, you know, are not always able to make certain dates. Um, so uh, we will be having a webinar about that um, on next Sunday. So if you do know anyone in this area, you can um, have them contact us for more information. And so the weekend intensive, it's going to be essentially all day Saturday, June 30th, and all day Sunday, July 1st. So when I say all day, um, you know, those of you who have been to our programs uh, know that it, they're a little intensive because, uh, you know, it's not like we are in Kemet and we have teachings written on the walls literally all over the place. So finances, time, all of these things, when we have these programs, they have to be a bit intensive because we're not able to unfortunately do them on a regular basis as they should be done. So there will be a lunch break. Um, <laughs> and um, other than that, we are going to spend a lot of time in the process because if it was just a lecture, would be one thing, but we're trying to make it integrative. So that will take a little bit more time to have that saw, that understanding with feeling experience I'm trying to bring about. So um, I'm going to leave um, the program and I thank you for your time. Uh, if you have specific questions, you can certainly email Kemetic Superpower, but really this is just to give an overview of what we're going to do in the workshop. Um, so we're going to get into all these points in, in more um, in deeper way in the workshop. I do have uh, an online class that we have um, this evening. So um, I will leave it in Asar Ong's um, hands to continue the program. I did want to share one more thing with you. And that is um, uh, there we're considering and it's uh, being contemplated. Uh, it's not officially yet, but it's been planned. Um, the possibility of a serpent power on the Nile spiritual pilgrimage to Kemet. So it's the same theme as this. And this program, these workshops are part of the preparation process for that pilgrimage to Kemet. So we're, if this is part of the purification process, part of the uh, 
understanding the process that we're doing and then to go to Kemet and actually have that experience in Kemet uh, will be very a very wonderful experience uh, to, to have it in the land of its origin. So if you're interested, um, it's a different email um, than the Kemetic Serpent Power. This is kemetmystictours at gmail.com at mystic tours at gmail.com so you can email if you're interested and as the planning proceeds then we um, can share that information with you uh. om hatap 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 and dua dua sabaja Dua, dua. Any questions before I exit? Or can I, are you okay if I leave at this point? Any? Can you hear me? I, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think we'll just go over with them the, um, just the details of the weekend in terms of the costs and location i'm sure everybody's you know interested in that you've given them the dates already so uh, i think we'll handle that part of it and certainly if they have any other questions you know we'd be that could happen right now i guess if they have any specific questions for you that don't concern kind of the logistics and that kind of stuff any other questions by anybody okay Okay, Dua. Dua. I'm going to so I'm going to stop the Okay. Video. I don't think we recorded, it, but it is one of those things. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh indeed. Okay, so um family, I want to um again, thank you all for being on the call. We do um appreciate you don't take for granted that you are, you know, so interested in um, your own development and enlightenment uh, in relation to learning um, the very ancient system of serpent power, um, Arat Sekim, as Sebajas just outlined. As you can see, there's a lot to really go into. Uh, she really just kind of gave you a, a, a nice taste of everything, and there's, there's a lot more to uncover in the process, and that will be done um, on July 29th, and pardon me, June. Uh, what was that date? Uh, 29th, 30th, and July 1st, I think that is, right? So um, I want to just give a couple of house cleaning for the two-day intensive, I'm sorry. For the two-day intensive, we will, um, we will uh, be at the location of Kuwumba House in, um, and this is 675 Metropolitan Parkway. So. And if you're interested um, and you choose to sign up, we'll also give this information to you. So um, in the in Southwest Atlanta, that's Suite 3118. And again, we'll be there from 7.30 in the morning till 6 p.m. at night with an hour lunch break. And that's um, over two days. That's um, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll also be doing an intro, intro session as well on the Friday night so you can be there. That will be um, at seven, and that will be at Hillside Truth Center, 2450 Cascade Road in Southwest Atlanta. Okay, so the, 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 big, um, the big thing about all of this now is what do we charge for, you know, for, for this intensive experience? So right now we're talking about essentially um, 16 hours, well, let's call it a minimum 14 hours plus of you know, comedic serpent power training and how do you really, you know, establish a value for um, something like that since there's, you know, pretty much not much of a comparison, right? Um, and the kind of information that Seba Jai is presenting to us is coming directly from the source. It's directly um, coming from, you know, comedic texts and teachings. Um, and so, um, of course, for her to amass and accumulate this type of knowledge, um, you know, she had to, you know, travel to Kemet, and we know that, you know, just one trip to Kemet can easily be, you know, these days three to four thousand dollars. So for her to spend the several trips that she's um, 
uh, spent in Kemet along with um, uh, Sebaima compiling uh, this system for us, recompiling and putting together um, in a way that we can now understand and process and appreciate uh, the serpent power um, knowledge that has been and wisdom that has been left for us. Um, in, in many ways, it's really priceless, right? So um, that's one aspect of it. Now, of course, you know, life is real and we want to put a price on it. So I would say that if we, we had to put a value on, on an hour of serpent power training, given that it's um, in the comedic context and it's this exclusive and not too many people would be able to replicate that. There's not too many places you can get that. I would say conservatively, maybe about $50 per hour would be a reasonable kind of mid-range um, value for that. And you're going to get at least 14 hours um, of training, um, you know, in this, a minimum of that in this particular course and weekend intensive, um, where she goes through all, all of the components of, as you see, a completely integrative approach to serpent power uh, training. So if we gave that a value, it'd probably be, if we charge what we're supposed to charge really in a world like this, you know, it'd, it'd probably be about $700 just for the weekend intensive. Of course, we're not going to um, charge you that um, at all um, for a couple of reasons. One, we know that the realities um, of often the people who are attempting to reach the spiritual heights um, face, right? So um, the, the pricing that we are offering for you as a part of um, the full price for the weekend is $395 that you can make a note of that. Now, what we decided to do was we wanted to make an extra special offer to those of you who are, who, who, when we put out the first message many months ago now, and it took us a while to put it all together, when we put out them, you responded. And so we wanted to reward your efforts in responding to this um, really um, quickly, like you did. And so we want to make a very special offer to you now that if you, um, and we will give you a limited time, we'll give you until May 1st um, to, make, uh, to make this payment if you're interested. Um, that price would be just $195, right? So just $195. And um, Sebaja has made it possible to break that up into three payments as well. So you make a payment April, then May, and then in June, right? So three monthly payments, and that would bring it down to sixty-five dollars per, um, you know, per per payment, right? Sixty-five dollars per payment. So we're, you know, we're we're hoping that that's a good deal for those of you who are on the call. Good enough for you to want to um, sign up, um, you know, over the next four days, at least by that time. Sooner the better, because that helps us to lock in everything. Um, so if that sounds like you know that that makes it possible and doable for you to be there at at the two day intensive, then um, I can go ahead and let you know one. I'll let you know the the website where you can go for that link right now, and that website is Egyptian www Egyptian mysteries dot org forward slash serpent power wisdom. And if you go to that site, you should see two buttons. Um, one, you can pay in full if you'd like to, or if you need to, you can make again that that um, that um, partial payment. And as long as you make the partial payment before uh, May first, you will get the the lowest price that we can give you, right? So um, so those are the two things. That, um, th those are the two things that I had for you. The, the price, I just put in the link, the URL in the chat box there. So um, with that, are there any questions, any comments, or any concerns that anybody would like to share? You might be muted right now, so you can unmute yourself if you need to. Or, OK. So Set Nahas says, does that include lodging? And is that for both locations, Dua Hitep? No, um, that does not include lodging at all. That just covers um, our uh, capacity. <laughs> if we could do lodging for that, that would be amazing. Uh, I do appreciate that. But yes, that does not include any type of lodging. These trips, uh, what we're focused on is, is presenting 
um, just the weekend intensive and covering all our costs related to that. Um, so the lodging is separate. Um, however, um, I think there might be a, a, you know, a couple of places that we are working with and we'll have more information on that a little later, all right? Yes, okay, Rhonda, yes, I, I, I got your message and uh, I'll take care of you tonight. Okay, are there any other questions, comments, concerns for those of you? This is the Atlanta, Atlanta group, anything at all? Okay, so once again, somebody asked where is the workshop located? So again, it will be held at Kuumba House, which is 675, 675 um, Metropolitan Parkway in Southwest Atlanta. So in the, I guess you'd call that the West End area, right? Uh, I'll type that in just so you can see that. That's where the main two days will be. And we'll also have an intro session um, the day before at the Hillside um, Universal Truth Center and that is 2450 Cascade Road, uh, which is not too far from that location. So let's, I'll go ahead and type those in so everybody has that. And while I'm typing, do we have any other questions? So is there an, an additional fee for the introductory session at Hillside at the Hillside Center? So no, for those of you who 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 um who you know pay the the amount or pay in to pay down the 65 or whether you pay the full amount, that will cover you for everything that we're offering that weekend in the way of just the, the training. So that covers the introductory session and it covers the two days as well. Right. And um so you, you're covered, you're, you're fully covered by that in that way. Thank you, Sekhmet Besra for asking that. And thank you, Safe and Pickett for your location question. Okay, Sekhmet Besra says, uh, Dua, this is awesome. Dua. Okay, um, Sekhmet Besrat, I'm going to go ahead and have to agree with you on that. I do think it's, I would agree that it's awesome. And it's a joy to be able to present and to assist with the unfolding of these types of training. Okay, so there you have it, folks. You know, this is a very, again, a very exclusive training. I, I, I don't know the last time we were able to I don't know the last time we were able to uh, present uh, such a training. Okay, I have a text call here, question. Right, so the, yeah, separately, if one didn't uh, set that number would be separate for the Friday night, meaning if somebody came in otherwise. Okay, good. Any other questions, comments, or concerns, anything at all? Good. How many people are, will be at this, um, can we get a quick poll? How many of you can, you know, know that you can commit to being there as of right now? That's okay. Give me a shout out real quick in the chat box or otherwise. Ugh. Can you All hear right. me? Can you hear uh, me? Who's me? I, I, yes, I can hear somebody. <laughs> Look, I can't find the chat box. This is Synovia from Birmingham. Hey, yeah. Synovia, welcome yeah, to the call. I think, How are you? The, I think the price is excellent. I'm on my grandson's whatever so it's his picture showing up but i'm here uh i love the price and it is my intention to be present do up for that 
Good, excellent, excellent. Good to hear from you. And of course, we'd love to have you in the building. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A tip. A tip. Great. We have some, uh, you know, some some uh, heavy hitters on the call. That's great to know. Um, so Novia has done some really great work, um, the yogic practice of Kemet, et cetera. And uh, also with prenatal yoga DVD that she's produced. Excellent work. Okay, so we have some people lining up to go. That's good. So again, I'll, um, yes, I did type in the, the, um, the, the address. Let me, let me make it clear that that's what it is so people know, because I may not have done that. And I'll type it in one more time. So location Oh, I keep, I'm sorry. I'm sending the location to the to private person and not to the group. Let me do that. How much money to? Okay. So that's the location information. All right, good, good. We have a, quite a few people who are saying that they are going. That's good to know. I'm glad to have you all aboard. Um, did everybody get the, the link? I'll paste that one more time just for good. Okay, so if we do not have any more questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for now and say again, a big dua to all of you for being here, for being on the call, for your presence. You will receive kind of a follow-up message um, from us as well. So look out for that just to remind you about it. That we will keep the offer open until May 1st. So that gives you um, five days. And, um, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So hopefully we get to see as many of you as possible on the call. And pardon me, not on the call, that's somebody calling me, but at the workshop, all right? So until then, I will leave you with these words, Hetep DC Nete Irimetuaj. May the divine continue to cause your life to flourish. All right. That's up, everyone. We'll talk soon. Have a great evening. Peace. Do a tip. Now you talk. Made <laughs> <laughs> right it to the last minute. Okay. I like that. All right. Beautiful. A tip. It's up.